All, all, all the matters, how much time? One five zero to matter, sir. This is what? One five zero one is main matter, sir. One five zero one for judgment. For the sake of clarity, following questions may be answered as under whether the provisions of the IBC would prevail over the Customs Act and if so, to what extent? The IBC would prevail over the Customs Act to the extent that once moratorium is imposed in terms of Section 14 or 35.5 of the IBC, as the case may be, the respondent authority only has a limited jurisdiction to assess, determine the quantum of customs duty and other levies. The respondent authorities does not have the power to initiate recovery of dues by means of sale confiscation as provided on the Customs Act. B. Whether the respondent could claim title over the goods and issue notices to sell the goods in terms of the Customs Act and the liquidation process has been initiated. Answer negative. On the above discussions, the following are the conclusions. Once maritime were imposed in terms of Section 14, or 35.3.5 of IBC, as the case may be. The respondent authority only has a limited jurisdiction to assess, determine the quantum of customs duty and other levies. The respondent authority does not have the power to initiate recovery of dues by means of sale confiscation as provided on the Customs Act. Two, after such assessment, the respondent authority has to submit its claim concerning customs duty, operational debt, in terms of the procedure laid down in strict compliance of the time periods prescribed under the IBC before adjudicating the authority. In any case, the IRP, RP liquidator can immediately secure goods from the respondent authority to be dealt with appropriately in terms of IBC. Resultantly, we allow the appeal and set aside the impugned order and judgment of the NCLAT. Immensely. Yes. This matter is linked to the one that has just been pronounced by the PJI. In this case, so two points for consideration was whether the son of a duty liquidator was justified in this sort of doing the second Swiss challenge process for sale of part of the assets of the corporate debtor, where the appellant was declared as an anchor bidder and opting for a private sale process to direct negotiation with respect to the composite assets of the corporate data. If so, was the NCLAT justified in directing the response number to the data to restart the entire process of private sale after issuing an open notice to prospective buyers instead of confining the process to those parties who had participated in the process? Uh, the, we have analyzed the entire statement and office of the IDC and the, <coughs> the enactment in the in Chapter 3, of uh, which deals with the liquidation process right from the stage of initiation of liquidation to the stage of dissolution of the corporate letter, and have concluded that the impugned judgment passed by NCLAT to the extent that it has modified the order dated 16th August 21, passed by NCLT, 
and directed restraining of private sale process is squashed on the other side. In our opinion, the private sale process of the corporate assets of the corporate data should be taken further by the responsible to the data without losing any further time, and we concluded at the earliest. All the eligible readers who have made earnest money deposits would be entitled to participate in the negotiations to be conducted by the DP data for privately selling the consolidated assets to the corporate data. The process of negotiations that are declared on 24th August 21 shall be taken to a logical end and not to a closure within four weeks from the date of pass from this. One five zero two for orders. One five zero two for orders. It's not your problem. The concern of the original petitioners and the monitoring committee merit due consideration of this court. Much good work has been done in the state of Karnataka because of the action initiated by the original petitioner and the subsequent judicial intervention by this court. In fact, it is this progress made steadily over the past decade that weighed with this court to even consider the relief regarding raising of the ceiling limit sought by the present applicant. The concerns raised by the original petitioner are possible over excavation and its adverse impact on intergenerational inter inter equity must be balanced against the concern of the other parties, as the principles of sustainable development also comes into play. This court has generally accepted the recommendations of the CEC when it comes to the ceiling limit. In the present case, the CEC has recommended a complete relaxation of the ceiling limit, but we are not inclined to allow the same in total. Rather, the situation merits a caution approach, keeping in view of the concern raised and to ensure that any changes in the situation with respect to the mining activity in the state of Karnataka is brought about gradually. We are of the opinion that the ceiling a limit of iron ore mining may be raised from 28 metric tons to 35 MMT for district Bellari and 7 MMT to 15 MMT to Chitradurga and Tumkur districts collectively. Conservation of ecology and the environment must go hand in hand with the spirit of economic development and fine balance between two goals is what is sought to be achieved even now. IAS 83141, 72931, 218 are disposed on the above terms. As far as IA 10973 of 2008 is concerned, the same relates to direction to the CEC and the monitoring committee regarding deciding application for enhancement of MPAP in terms of the earlier orders of this court. The same may be considered by the court on the next date of hearing. Indeed. 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 One five zero three. Please. One five zero three. Sean, three B smart. The question raised in the present set of petitions relates to promises made by political parties for the distribution of free goods or freebies as a part of their election manifesto or during election speeches. The main contentions of the petition is that such free election promises, which have a large scale impact on the economy of the state, cannot be permitted. The petition submit that such free election promises are being made by political parties without any assessment of the financial implication on. The state is nothing but an attempt to attract the vote bank. This goes against the spirit of reasonable electro electronic and is adversely affecting free and fair elections. This severely affects the level playing field between the different political parties. The money that is being paid by the taxpayers is ultimately being misused for political parties, candidates to gain or retain power. <coughs> In this batch of petitions, there are two sets of petitions. The first batch relates to pre-election freebies, which may influence voters at the time of elections. The second set of petitions challenging the grant of benefits by the government, which do not relate to any welfare measure or development activity, but rather are a ploy to capture vote banks. 
the land solicitor and respondent and thereafter the election commission additionally some other employed respondents and all that and ultimately previous may create a situation where the state government cannot provide basic amenities due to lack of funds and the state is pushed towards imminent bankruptcy in the same breath we could remember that such freebies are extended utilizing taxpayers money only for increasing the popularity of the party and electoral prospects we have considered the issues raised in these batch of repetitions from various angles as well as the stance taken by the union of india election commission of india and some political parties who have filed intervention applications before us there are there can be no deny the fact that an an electoral democracy such as us the true power ultimately lies with the electorate it is the electorate that decides which party or candidate comes to power and also judges the performance of the said party or candidate at the end of the legislative terms during the next round of the elections it is also necessary to highlight here in the point raised by some of the interveners that all promises cannot be equated with freebies as the related to welfare schemes or for the public good not only are these issues a part of the directive principles of the state policy but are also responsibility of the welfare state at the same time the worry raised by the petitioners here in that under the guise of electoral promises physical response responsibility is being dispensed with must also be considered this court generally state its hand when confronted with issues relating to policy or physical matters concerning the state at the same falls outside the ambit of the court's jurisdiction initially with the objective of initiating a discussion about the issues highlighted we are of the opinion that it might be appropriate to consult an expert body to prepare a report or white paper which would suggest a way forward to this end we ordered on date 3 8 we sought for suggestions from the parties before us regarding the possible composition of such a body additionally during the course of the last hearing we had suggested the union of india that all party meeting can be called to consider this issue ultimately it appears us that the issues raised by the parties require an extensive hearing before any consent orders can be passed certain preliminary issues that may be need to be deliberated upon the and decided in the present set of petitions as follows what is the scope of judicial intervention with respect to the relief sought in the present batch of petitions whether any enforceable order can be passed by this court in this state petition whether the appointment of commission public expert body by the court would serve any purpose in this matter additionally that should be the scope and composition and powers of the said body apart from the above preliminary questions many of the parties before us also submitted a judgment of this court in subramanya balaji requires reconsideration subramanya balaji this court was called upon to determine whether the pre election promises amount to corrupt practices on section 123 of the representation of the people's act the court in that case held that such promises do not fall within the ambit of corrupt practices as specified under section 123 of the representation of the people's act and issue direction to the election commission of india regarding framing of certain guidelines in the absence of any legislative enactment covering the field looking at the complexity of the issues involved and the prayer to overrule the judgment rendered by two judge bench of this court subramanya balaji we direct listing of the set of the petition before the three judgment after obtaining the order from the honorable chief judge list of the after two weeks sir subject to my lord's pleasure four weeks four weeks grateful to you all right well very grateful to you thank you mr aswini kumar bringing the issues in the program will miss you lots of us aswini kumar p ml sharma sharma is not there 1504 excuse me my name 1504 yes for the four set reasons we concur with the findings returned in the impugned judgment which is upheld the appellant state government is directed to take necessary steps to process the allotment of the subject land in favor of the respondent company within four weeks from today the respondent company shall file a fresh undertaking with the state government within the same timeline as was filed by the high court 
for initiating time-bound activities for the benefit of the surrounding villages as compensatory measures for allocation of the subject land. The appeal is dismissed by leaving the parties to bear their own expenses. One five zero five. <laughs> So in the opposite circumstances, we do not think it is necessary to go into the contentions raised by both sides on the issue of a denial of sanction for prosecution and the legal pleas ought to be raised in relation to the issue. However, we think it appropriate that uh, the legal questions on the issue of sanction be left open to be considered in appropriate case. Consequently, this appeal is dismissed subject to the other Left the question of law. Legal questions. Legal questions. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Vojo's Story and support independent, robust journalism.